Hi and welcome to part 2 of the Calculus 1 video on implicit differentiation. In this video we will look at three examples, so let's start looking at the first one here. Differentiate implicitly e to the xy plus x squared minus y squared equals 10. So e to the xy in this problem is definitely going to be the toughest part, so let's take a look at that right off the bat. e to the xy, the derivative of e is itself times the derivative of that exponent. So we need to figure out what the derivative of xy is. xy is a product, so I will use product rule. The derivative of x is 1, and I will leave y alone, plus leave x alone, and the derivative of y is dy dx. And this is all in the parentheses for e to the xy. So e to the xy is going to need to be distributed to each of those two terms. And I do have two terms here in the parentheses because that product rule broke it up as such. So there's my derivative of e to the xy. A couple other things you might want to practice are things like sine of xy, cosine of xy, things like that with trig in it where we will have the product inside of that argument. Okay, moving along plus x squared, so the derivative of x squared would be 2x, minus y squared, that derivative would be minus 2y using power rule, and I just took the derivative of y with respect to x, so there's my dy dx, equals the derivative of 10 is 0. So remember the idea, hopefully this is not your first attempt at implicit differentiation, hopefully this is sort of um, video 2 for you or you've had some experience with it. The idea behind implicit differentiation is that every derivative of a y will have a dy dx in it. So that's why we see the dy dx terms in there. Okay, so I will distribute. So 1y times e to the xy is going to be y e to the xy or 1y e to the xy, but you don't have to write the 1, plus continue your distributing here. So it'll be x e to the x y, and this is my dy dx term. Again, I don't personally recommend putting y prime because it's going to look like an exponent and becomes hard to find and hard to solve for, and some errors can occur, but certainly you can put y prime instead. I will copy down the rest. Okay, now the idea is from here pretty much always the same. You're going to gather all your dy dx terms on the left or one side, doesn't really matter which side of the equal sign, and then every other term on the other side. So here are my non dy dx terms and I will underline my dy dx terms. So the dy dx terms that are underlined are x e to the x y minus 2y, and I factored out the dy dx, so I didn't have to write that each term. Then I will subtract over the y e to the xy, as well as the 2x gets subtracted. I will divide to solve for dy dx, and I will write my solution. One thing to note with the solution is if you notice you do have two terms in your numerator and two terms in your denominator and all of them except for one are negative. So another option might be to factor out the negative one over a negative one so that only that one positive term now turns negative, everything else is positive. That is also just the difference of whether you put your dy dx on the left hand side of the equal sign or the right hand side of the equal sign, so it really doesn't matter. Those are equivalent. And again, there's nothing that you can factor out or divide out, so that is your complete final derivative. Okay, now let's look at a process for second derivative, which this reads the second derivative of y with respect to x twice. So that is not a typo, so I will write that out in words. The second derivative of y with respect to x twice. And especially when you get into multivariable calculus, you will see why that notation is the way it is. 
So if I'm starting with this y squared equals x cubed, we're going to need that later too. So let me go ahead and make sure that's highlighted here. So let's go ahead and go through the first derivative. So that will be 2y. I just took the derivative of y with respect to x. Again, that means I just did the derivative of a y term with x being my independent variable equals x cubed's derivative would be 3x squared. And again, I just took the derivative of x with respect to x, which we don't necessarily need to write down that you just did dx dx, okay? So I'll solve for dy dx. So dy dx equals, I'll divide both sides by 2y. And here's a decent dy dx, okay? It's pretty. Now let's do the derivative of this to get the second derivative. What it actually looks like is you're doing the derivative of dy dx with respect to x, which is why it looks like d squared y over dx squared, okay? This is going to be, I'm gonna use quotient rule. You certainly could bring up the 2y, write it to the negative one, use product with chain, or you have options, but I'm just gonna use quotient rule here. So I'm gonna say low d high, I'm taking the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x, minus the high, which is 3x squared, d low, which is two, but I just took the derivative of y with respect to x, so I'm gonna write the dy dx, and it's all over that low quantity squared. I'll make this look a little bit nicer. This is really d squared y is what it looks like over dx squared. So this first term in my numerator here is going to be 12xy, right? Six times two is 12. And then we write the letters or variables in alphabetical order if it's just a, a product there minus 6x squared dy dx all over, I'm going to square 2y, 4y squared. Now this would be great, but what I want you to look at is if this was my final answer, do you notice that I not only need a point xy, but now I also need a derivative? Okay, well, that might not necessarily be the case. Maybe I don't want to have to know the derivative to have to know the second derivative, right? It's kind of like that recursively defined function where you need to know the 99th term to find the 100th. Well, I don't want to have to know the 99th term, right? Maybe I just want a formula for how to find the 100th term. So same thing here. Maybe I just want to put in my point x, y. So we already know what dy, dx is. We found it. We found it right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that substitution and I'm gonna put a one right here because this is my first substitution. So d squared y over dx squared is what it looks like. So I'm gonna copy down 12xy, I'm gonna copy down 6x squared, but instead of the dy dx, I'm gonna put 3x squared over to y, which is what that derivative's value is. I can divide six by two, so I'm gonna try to make this look a little bit nicer. Now this is all, you're simplifying. So 12xy minus, that'll leave a three. Three times three is nine. This would make x to the fourth over y. Okay, so from here, I will absolutely multiply by y over y so that I can clear that complex fraction and see what this looks like. I am going to have to distribute that y. So I have 12xy squared minus 9x to the fourth all over 4y cubed. Okay, and this temporarily you know, looks a lot neater than my complex fraction, and I might think, ooh, I'm done. Well, we've already used the first substitution that I told you about where we replaced the derivative value, the dy dx, with what it is equal to, but there's one other substitution that we are going to need to make. So look back up here at the original. I know that y squared is equal to x cubed, so I'm gonna write that down over here y squared 
is equal to x cubed. And this is the original equation, okay? y squared equals x cubed is the original equation. And I can substitute this into this second derivative so that it's all in terms of one variable or so that it is much more simplified than what it was in the previous step. So what I mean by that is for every y squared, I could substitute that, for example, with x cubed. Okay, well here's a y squared and there is a y squared built in y cubed. y cubed is just y squared times y. Right, so I can turn this all into x's. So watch what this looks like. So I'll write second derivative of y with respect to x twice is 12x times, instead of y squared, we're going to put x cubed. And again, here's my second substitution that I'm making. Minus 9x to the fourth is going to stay, because that's already obviously in terms of x. And then in my denominator, I have 4y times y squared, and the y squared is x cubed. Okay, well let's see what this is gonna look like then. I haven't completely gotten rid of all of my y's, but I've at least substituted all of those y squareds as x cubed. Well, this numerator is 12x to the fourth minus 9x to the fourth. That makes 3x to the fourth. Then in my denominator, I have 4y times x cubed. And hopefully you notice that those x's will divide. So I have 3 x, one of them would be left over, over 4y. This is a really good second derivative, okay? This is very simplified. It looks easy to work with. Again, if I gave you a point, you could put that in and figure that out. But the key to these second derivatives is that you often will have two substitutions that you need to make. You're gonna need to find where you put the derivative in. So when you're finding the second derivative, it's based on the first derivative, and I know what the derivative is algebraically, plug that in. And then you're also gonna see if you simplify it enough, an opportunity to substitute in that original equation. So go ahead and do that somewhere, somehow. There's also ones that might look like your original equation is x cubed plus y cubed equals whatever, 12. Well, in your equation, really try to find that x cubed plus y cubed because then you can just put a 12 in its place. So that's what I mean by try to find the original in there. You may have to factor something out, but that x cubed plus y cubed, for example, might be there. So I found for every y squared in our example, I could substitute x cubed and it made my second derivative look really nice and usable. All right, last one for this video is determine the slope of the tangent line. So I do need the first derivative, and here is my curve. So there's a couple things um, going on with this curve. And then it says at the point x equals zero. So I need to figure out zero comma what? Because remember, this isn't necessarily explicitly defined y equals in terms of x. I have x's and y's all over the place, so I need to know what the y value is so I can put that into my derivative as well as the x value. So let's substitute zero in for x. So that gives me zero minus cosine of zero equals one plus y. And cosine of zero is one, so this will be negative one. Subtract that one over, so y is negative two. So that's first and foremost, you've gotta have the whole point. Okay, so now looking at this, let's go ahead and find the derivative. So I'm gonna copy it down, and I'm gonna say right off the bat, one thing that you could do is you could add cosine of x, y to this right-hand side, and the reason that you would do that is not because you can combine it with anything, but it's so that you don't have to deal with the negative. So if you're finding that you're having some errors with these, maybe it's because of a sign error, well you can help yourself and eliminate that sign error by just adding the cosine of xy to the other side. It's an option, but I'm gonna try to teach you now how to 
eliminate those errors and really take your time and go slow and, and we'll be all right. All right, so x, y squared, this is product. Again, this shouldn't be our first experience with implicit, but if it is, here we go. x, y squared, product rule, derivative of x is one. I will leave y squared alone, plus x, and now the derivative of y squared is two y, and I just took the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, moving along, minus cosine x, y. The derivative of negative cosine xy is positive sine of xy, right? You're not allowed to change the angle. Stop your trig times the derivative of what's inside because you have to apply chain rule. So the derivative of the xy, again, is a product. Derivative of x is one, I will leave y alone, plus x, times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. So there is my derivative of negative cosine y. It does turn positive in this case, so it is a little bit more helpful. Equals derivative of one, be careful, that is zero, and derivative of y is dy dx. I'm only gonna do one more step before I put in my point, but I do wanna make it very, very clear you could put your values for x and y in now and just base your answer on your computation, okay? I'm only gonna do one more step so you can see what this looks like in expanded form. This sign x, y needs to get multiplied by that y as well as that term right there. So that's all I'm gonna do is multiply that out so you can get used to seeing that and I will make this look a little bit better. So instead of x times two y, I will say 2xy dy dx, and now here's that distributing. So if I'm multiplying sine xy times 1y, I'm gonna put that first so I don't accidentally change my angle and make that y squared or something. Plus, now x sine xy, and this is my dy dx term and this will equal dy dx. Okay, and my x value is zero, and my y value is negative two. So everywhere you see an x, I will substitute zero, and everywhere you see a y, I will substitute negative two. All right, so I just substituted in the zero for x and the y for negative two. Here's my big long list. It looks like a lot of computation, but anytime there's a zero at all in x or y, a lot of these terms are gonna turn out to be zero. So just take your time, negative two quantity squared is four plus zero times all of that, zero. Now, sine of zero is zero. That term is zero. Sine of zero again is zero. That whole term is zero. So four plus zero equals dy dx. I can do that. <laughs> dy dx is, again, I wasn't asked to find the algebraic, right, dy dx, because I would have had to combine like terms and divide and do all that. I don't have to do that if I want a numerical answer or a value of a derivative at a specific point, I can just plug in that point as soon as I find the derivative. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it helpful.